Well, this is it. The final video for the hashtag Audrey Diorama challenge, and yes, it's more Model U figures. Obviously. Hi guys! Looking at the illustration once more showed me that one thing was missing, the figures. So for the most part the only way to go for these were Model U. Starting with the footplate crew, which was designed for the double fairly. The three sitting chaps for the wagon and the van were designed for a Wickham trolley. And these had tools to boot. The shepherd happened to be carrying his jacket over his shoulder. A shepherd's known for doing this or something? The border collie is, well, a uh, good boy. Oh, a model you do do sheep, but I had some from eBay that I bought for Welsh one lamb for sheep wagons a few years back, so I'll just use these. Guess what's first? Yes, you in the back, quite right. Gluing cotton buds to their feet or bums, depending on their stance. Let's start with the animals. Now, the sheep are already in a black undercoat, so I went straight in with a light antique white for the off-white wool colour. I held the sheep by the head, which meant that the divide between the wool and the black head was soft. Much more realistic than if I'd painted it. All I needed to do here was touch up the old black undercoat with fresh, where it had been chip scratched or the white spray had caught it. Oh, and the legs were painted black as well. This didn't need to be amazing painting, as I'd assume the grass would cover most of them. The sheep looked very cold and clean, so I went over with Army Painter's Skeleton Bone, which I thinned down a bit to apply. And you can see how it's almost looking like, well, a dirty sheep. I then dabbed off parts to soften the coat. Sheep complete. Onto the good boy. He was sprayed with a coat of matte white. It makes much more sense to spray the white and apply the black over the top as opposed to the other way round. And at this point I was wondering how to get the general look of a fur coat. And settled on almost dabbing the black on with a flat brush. With one pointy edge into the black and white divide. With little strokes of the brush I managed to get an uneven edge to the black. Which was close enough in this scale I think. All I had to do was work my way round the good boy. The only other detail to add was Good Boy's mouth, and this was just a touch of tanned flesh. Oh, and any colour I give the name of in this video will be from Army Painters, unless otherwise stated. With the animals done, I turned to the humans. To undercoat these, I gave them the old white from above, black from below technique. It's a subtle thing in this scale, but it has given shadow effects to the figures when you look closely. By the way, my fingers are probably looking like they're turning to stone in this video, but being acrylic, it washes off easily. Starting with the driver, and we'll call him Tom. So I start with Tom's skin. This is Citadel, Kislev Flesh. And to add highlights, Citadel flayed one flesh. His dry brush from above. and a wash of Reichland Flesh Shade is applied upside down, which settles in the dips and creases, giving a bit more emphasis on the shadows. So Tom is wearing overalls and a jacket, so these will all be the same colour, and I went with deep blue. Being Army Painter's acrylic, which is quite thin, it benefits from the shadowed undercoat. This means all I have to do is just block in the blue and the primer will do the rest. Because if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Taylor Swift said that. Then I painted Tom's shirt collar, which is just a matte white. This is Ammo's Enamel Black Wash. A couple of people have asked about what I use, and sometimes I do use the Vallejo Acrylic Black Wash, but this one from Ammo is far easier to use.
Figure number two is John. John's 42 from Birmingham and enjoys a good game of darts. He's going through marital issues at the moment, but believes buying a new greenhouse for the garden will pull them through. Good for you, John. Anyway, John's wearing a jumper under his jacket, so I started by painting this with leather brown. His trousers are going to be dungeon grey. And the jacket itself is going to be monster brown. Again, I'm picking colours closest to the illustration. They don't need to be exact, just on the right lines. Whenever I paint Modlu figures, the detail always makes me smile. I mean, look at the creases in the fabric. You can see now how thin the Monster Brown is as it's applied to the jacket. This has had a second coat applied, and you can see the shadow effects working in the folds of the jacket. So John is destined to sit in a wagon, but his foot doesn't quite reach the floor. But luckily, the Wickham trolley crew came with not only tools, but this little bag. So he can rest his foot on this. I'm painting it in oak brown. And leather brown is dry brushed quite heavily over the top. When it's dry, the straps are painted with oak brown again to pick them out. So the van needs two boys sitting in the doorway. Luckily, one of the three Wickham figures is looking to his left, so he's up next. This is Peter. Peter is 38... No, I'm not doing that again. So I'm starting with Peter's jumper. And this is being painted ash grey. I like this colour. Being light, it's a good one to show off the shadows. Peter's going to be wearing some nice oak brown trousers. Not that you can see that because the camera's focused on my hand. You can just assume that I paint his shoes black. You don't need to see me paint everyone's shoes black. So Peter is sitting in the van chatting to his mate. This chap's got a jumper on as well by the look of it. And I've painted it in monster brown. And yes, all army painter paints have silly names if you're a railway modeler like myself. If you haven't tried painting high detail figures like the Modlu products, you might be sitting watching this thinking it takes a lot of skill. Just as long as you're careful around the edges and the joins and the clothing, it's really not that scary. His trousers are painted in mummy robes. Another nice name there. Onto the shepherd. I've decided to paint this guy with a dark complexion because you don't see many figures painted in any other colour of skin than white. So I've used Citadel's Doom Bull Brown as the skin main colour and with the usual Raiklan flesh over the top. He's wearing a white shirt in this picture so this is just painted matte white again. Brilliant colour to show the shading through. He has his trousers painted monster brown and I'm starting to think at this point they all buy their clothes at the same shop. So he's holding his jacket over his shoulder like in the book's illustration. I couldn't believe my luck when I spotted this figure. And this is leather brown. And he'll go off for his black enamel wash now. So here they are, lined up, ready to go to work. Let's start with the van. And I'll admit at this point, if you model the door as it should be, the gap isn't actually wide enough for two figures to fit in it. So I've opened it up a little bit further than it actually goes. But you didn't notice, did you? Good. The figures get a drop of glue on the bum and they sit down, forever. There's Peter, ready for his mate to join in the chat. And here he is, glue on the bum, and he enters the chat. They just about fit now. So here's John and he's got his bag glued to his foot ready. And as he goes into position on the wagon, you can see how he would have never been able to put his foot on the floor. 
On to Scarlowy and his crew are ready for the footplate. I'm trying to glue the driver at the correct angle for the book. And the fireman gets a classic narrow gauge leaning out the cab stance. Down in the field and the shepherd gets glued down. Here I've glued him looking towards the sheep, but later on I've altered him to look towards the train. I mean, can you blame him? Good boy has got his head turned to the right so he can keep an eye on those sheep. And the sheep just get positioned like in the book, with a tiny drop of glue on each hoof. Do, do sheep have hooves? Trotters? So the rolling stock get positioned on the layout. And we're done. It may not seem like it when you see these videos just once a week, but this has been mental to get done. From getting the stock delivered in time to start the builds, to waiting for the paint or the scenery to dry, to sitting and learning how to paint a background again. But it's been super fun. And I'm really grateful that the Tatlin decided to do this challenge for those of us who aren't going to the Order Extravaganza. It's also been great to model the Scarlowy Railway in this way. It's a railway ingrained into our hearts as we grew up with it. It's actually quite emotional to think that at 30 years ago I was crawling to the TV when I heard the Thomas theme tune, and now here I am modelling the scene. Great stuff. Anyway, enough of that. No, don't get up. Check out some of my other videos. How about Chorus? We'll be back on that now. Now, where did we get to? Cheers.